Hello there, I'm Louise Brady welcoming you to another edition of Top 10 Bikes 2003. We've assembled a panel of experts who between them have years of experience. Now they voted for the bikes in this year's series to bring you our guide to the best bikes of 2003. Well, here is the coveted award that will be presented to the manufacturer of this week's number one bike. Stay with us to find out who will be this week's winner. Enough of the talking, let's bring on those learner legal bikes. Starting us off in 10th position is the Kimco Pulsar Lux 125. If you're not familiar with the name Kimco, it's not surprising as it's a Taiwanese firm making inroads into the European market. So what has the Pulsar Lux got going for it, apart from an unusual name? Well, it's price tag for a start. It costs 1695 on the road. How does that grab you? Well, for less than two grand, you get one of the best equipped small bikes out there. You've got an electric and kickstart, a fuel gauge, a toolkit, automatic choke, ref counter, high and wide mirrors, and a rear carrier to strap your shop into. The Lux comes with a little fairing, which helps diffuse wind blast. It's different to everything else out there, so that will appeal to some people too. It's a fairly well-built workhorse. Fit and finish is a bit slap happy though, but you do get what you pay for. Pulsar Lux, yes, it's um, not very Lux at all really. It's, um, it's a basic commuting 125 and it really does feel like it. It used to have a big price advantage over the Honda CG and uh, the CG now is much, much closer on price and the Kimco's electric starts, well, the Honda's got one now. Um, the engine has to be revved hard, it's buzzy, the suspension's very, very choppy, the brakes are grabby. Um, I couldn't really recommend that one. Good bike to learn on, good bike to commute on, but not a bike to love and cherish. So the combined scores of the panel for each of those categories, including street cred, build quality, performance, comfort and value, give the Kinko Pulsar Lux 125 a total score of 54%, putting it firmly at the bottom of our chart in 10th place. In at nine is the first scooter of the bunch, the Peugeot Jet Force. Now the Jet Force comes in a 50cc and 125cc version. The 50 is a fuel injected two stroke and the 125 is a fuel injected four stroke. Both machines come with a double beam frame, just like proper sports bikes. They've got link brakes, rev counter and immobilizers as standard. And if you really want to be hauled to a stop, you can get the 125 version with servo assisted anti-lock brakes. Serious stopping power for a scooter. The 50cc costs just over two grand and the 125 comes in just under three. But if you fancy those anti-lock brakes, then you're gonna have to fork out just over three grand. For some reason, Peugeot didn't give the Jet Force its built-in bow a lot, which is a big shame. You're never gonna have a great deal of fun riding around on it, but it's a good introduction. The Jet Force has got a Peugeot badge. Now that's actually important because there are loads and loads of dealers and the quality of Peugeot has gone up a lot in the last uh, two or three years, I should think. Looks great, stops on a six months with its link brakes, goes well enough. What more do you want when you're 16 from a scooter? Well, it looks good, but it is heavy. And it's packed full of features that some people might not need. That standard engine is just not quite powerful enough to really keep things moving around town. So adding up the panel scores for each category gives the Peugeot Jet Force a total score of 57%, placing it ninth in our top 10 chart. The number eight spot has been hijacked by the Germans. No, it's not another BMW. It's the Saks XTC 125. If you fancy yourself as a Ducati person, once you've passed your test, then the Saks is the starter machine for you. Race by, good looks, a Ducati-esque trellis style frame and undersea exhaust. It could be mistaken for a Duke at a distance. Very good looking, but with the look comes a premium. You'll have to fork out a whopping four grand for this baby. The racy riding position isn't the most comfortable, and if you're a newbie, it might take some getting used to. The seat has no padding to speak of, and it's a very tall bike. Other than that, it handles, looks good, and will get you lots of street cred. Yeah, the XTC125 is, um, it's actually a really good looking little bike. You know, you might, some people will find it's a bit tall, um, and, uh, 
if you're lucky, you'll be mistaken for a Ducati rider. But um, the build quality, I'm afraid, is not good from Saks, and um, they need to improve on that before I could say, yes, go and get one of these. The Saks XTC125 it looks great, costs a fortune, and its build quality leads you to believe that it won't be around more, much more than a few years, so probably best left alone. Well, I think the little sax looks fabulous and you'll be hard pushed to see it's a 125 before you fire her up. When you do, there is an element of disappointment because this machine couldn't pull the skin off a rice pudding and it will be beaten on the streets by everything this side of a street sweeper. So the sexy sax XTC125 is in eighth place in our Learner Legals chart with a total score of 64% from our panel. Wheedling in at seven is the Suzuki Van Van. This bike is pitched firmly at the camping crew. Strap your Van Van on the back of your camper and off you go. Essentially, it's a beach bike. The wide fat tyres are ideal for coping with sand. And if you're using it as a commuter, I'm sure it'll be very useful. The engine is a softly four-stroke single, so it won't bite back, which is good if you're a beginner. But it is a bit gutless if you do intend to commute with it. It's tiny in height and very light in weight, so if you're on the little side, the Van Van could be a good option. It handles well and has been very popular with riding schools. It's as easy to ride as they come. So if you fancy a bike that's a little bit different, the quirky Van Van is worth a look. Good fun, but um, you know you could probably do better as a, for a learner 125 for sure, especially because of those balloon tyres make handling a, a little bit interesting. The Van Van, where did that come from? Um, well, I actually think they look quite cool, but nobody else seems to. I mean, they're, they're, they don't sell very well at all. It may look like something that, that dropped out of the 70s, but actually works as, a, as an urban 125 run around. The little Van Van comes dressed with the most ridiculous balloon tyres I've ever seen fitted to a motorcycle. And another problem is the engine. It just won't wake up. It drags you round half asleep. So our panel of experts have scored the Suzuki Van Van a total of 64%, placing it 7th place in our top 10 chart. Coasting in to 6th position in our top 10 learners is the baby drag star, the Yamaha XVS125. If you're a wannabe Harley owner, then this is a good starting point for you. The V-Twin 125 looks a much bigger bike, especially with its twin chromed exhaust. It is a touch on the heavy side, but the low seat makes it manageable. The V-Twin engine has been donated by the Virago, but reworked for more power. However, even with this, the engine runs out of puff when tackling hills. The relaxed riding position is comfy if you've got a bit of a commute, and the styling and machine layout will keep people guessing as to the size of your engine. It's a small bike that has the looks and feel of a much bigger machine. So, as a learner, you can hold your head high and pretend you've been riding for years. XVS 125. 125 Customs are not exciting generally, um, but the XVS is actually pretty good. Yamaha, as a rule, makes the best of the Japanese custom bikes. Um, and uh, the XVS is um, it's quite a cool looking little machine and it goes reasonably well. And um, yeah, I think it does the job actually. It's quite a good one. The Yamaha XVS 125 doesn't feel like a 125. It feels like a real motorbike. It feels like a real... Virago, one of, its, uh, one of its bigger, bigger siblings, and for that reason alone it's proved very popular. The Harley wannabe drag star is just that. It's dressed up to look like something else, but a great little bike to learn on. So our panel's total final scores for the Yamaha drag star is 67%, putting it firmly into sixth place in our top 10 chart. Well, we're halfway through our chart of top 10 learner legals and it's time now for a quick break. But please don't go anywhere as coming up in part two, we reveal the bike that's taken the number one spot. See you then. Welcome back to Top 10 Bikes. I'm Louise Brady guiding you through the top 10 learner legals of 2003 as voted for by our panel of experts. Right, let's recap on the chart so far. In at 10, the Kimco Pulsar Lux 125. At 9, the Peugeot Jet Force. Slotting in at 8, we've Saks XTC 125. The Suzuki Van Van, the RV125 sits at 7. And at number 6, it's the Yamaha XVS125. So on with our chart from 5 down to 1. 
Racing into fifth position, it's the Derby GPR 50. Now, this 50cc two-stroke engine is fine for beginners, but experienced riders will soon become frustrated. The GPR handles, brakes, and has a superb chassis. Just the same, it's got such a teeny-weeny engine. That six-speed box will keep your left foot and hand really busy as you hurtle towards 50 miles an hour. It's a fine looking machine and for about two and a half grand, you can have one of the most beautiful little bikes out there. Weighing in at only 98 kilos, you could almost pick it up and carry it if you need to. The fuel tank is a dummy cover, which can be used for storage. Very useful if you don't want to carry your lid everywhere. It's an agile little machine and extremely stable. Add in a cool paint job and tons of street cred, the Derby is a bit of a winner. It's a bike to love and cherish until you're ready to move on to bigger things or bigger engines. The good thing is, if you are 16 and you want to look good, then the Derby is probably one of the best looking 50s you can get. Certainly better than a, a C50 or, or a step through. Uh, so, you know, if you're a young lad, this is a thing to get. And the bikes are pretty good. I mean, like a lot of 50s, the suspension's a bit bouncy and things, but the engine works well and it's worth considering, definitely. Perhaps it's pushing the boat out a bit too much, trying to make a 50 look like a sports bike. Yes, OK, the engine's gutless, but it is an absolute hoot for playing about on. Just don't take yourself too seriously. So those combined scores for each category of street cred, build quality, performance, comfort and value give the Derby GPR 50 a total score of 68%. Right, we're on to number four now, and it's a rather sexy Italian. It's the Piaggio Vespa GT125. GT stands for Gran Turismo, so this is the one little bike that you need to get out and about on. The styling is classic Vespa all the way. Curvy, sexy, and a little bit different. The four-stroke engine is responsive, and the GT is very nippy. With twin discs up front and a very good rear brake, means you can manage some great slides. The suspension is typical for a scooter. Hit a bump and you'll be all over the place. But it does handle well the most scoots. It has lots of legroom for the taller rider and a roomy seat so you can take a passenger in comfort. You'll even get funky little chromed fold-out foot pegs. The advantage of owning a scooter is the under-seat storage. Very handy when you nip into the shops, but on the GT, you'll need to take your lid with you when you're buying one, as some helmets don't fit under the seat, which is a bit of a drawback. The seat also has an electric lock, which is operated by a button on the leg shield. However, it's still possible to operate the lock without the key in the ignition, unless the ignition is set to lock. One little quote to be aware of. It isn't too badly priced either. At 2599 on the road, you can own a classy piece of the Italian bike world. If you like your motorcycling in a Jamie Oliver style, this is the bike for you. Step this way. Ah, the GT125 Vespa. Now here's a bike that actually carries the Vespa badge very, very well. Um, the new GT series have, uh, have, have taken on board all the old Vespa values, I think, and uh, modernised them, brought them up to date, and uh, they work very well. It's solid, it's a little bit tall again, like a lot of scooters, um, but it handles nicely, goes well, very, very well made, and uh, looks like a Vespa, and it's cool. Nobody can make a retro Vespa better than Vespa. Now, although this machine has a capable engine, it is wrapped in styling that says otherwise, and I'm not a big fan. I'd rather have a more sporty, funky-looking scooter. So, the Piaggio Vespa GT125 has a total score of 71%, putting it firmly in fourth place in our chart by our panel of experts. At three is a sporty little Honda in the form of the NSR125. This is a big time learner favourite. It looks like a sports bike that people aspire to buy. So, as you can imagine, it's been a very popular bike in its time. The Pocket Rocket is a feisty little two-stroke, so it's quick off the mark and can leave a few people standing at the lights. But being a two-stroke, it does need its oil topping up on a regular basis. And Honda, in their wisdom, decided to locate the oil reservoir under the petrol tank. Not exactly ideal for ease of access, is it? The NSR is roomy enough for taller riders, but the riding position does put a lot of weight through your arms. The bike isn't great at low speeds, and U-turns aren't easy either. 
All that said though, it does handle well and is one of the few restricted 125s that doesn't suffer too badly from the restriction. It's recently had a price cut and currently costs just over three grand on the road. But it's going to be replaced next year by the CBR125 and I'm sure there'll be many a heavy heart to see the NSR go. It's a bit strange this, Honda have, have got this great racing heritage and have done over the years but their 125s have never really looked as good as say Aprilia's have or, or Kajiva's. Yeah the NSR125, now that suffers from the fact it's about to be superseded which doesn't help. Um, also it's slower than the Aprilia and it costs more than the Aprilia and it doesn't look as cool as the Aprilia. Apart from that, it's really good. The Honda NSR125 is, is a lot of money for what it is, but again, it's Honda built, it will last, uh, even given the usual 17-year-old abuse. So from that, from that point of view, it's, uh, it's a winner. What a great little bike to learn to ride on. Now in restricted form, it's a pussycat, but it'll bring a smile to all those spotty 16-year-old faces when those restrictors come off. So the panel's combined scores for each category give the well-loved Honda NSR125 a total score of 72%, placing it in third spot of our chart. In the runner-up spot, it's Aprilia's RS125, costing a whopping 3599 You'll have to really want this bike to part with your cash. The handling is superb and the brakes are fantastic and it looks sublime. The wicked two-stroke power band is an absolute giggle, but you do have to be in the right gear all the time to get the best from this pint-sized Italian. Its racy disposition can make it hard for beginners to get to grips with, but once you get the hang of it, the fun really starts. It sticks to the road like glue and will inspire your cornering confidence. Size-wise, it looks quite large for a 125, but once you straddle it, everything falls into place. The restricted version is mooted to reach a cool 85 miles an hour, which is more than enough if you're just starting out in biking. This Aprilia is a grin machine. It oozes with street cred and Italian cool and has the presence of a much bigger machine. The Aprilia RS 125 is the ultimate bike for any 17 year old. It's, it is the full GP replica. What you see racing in MotoGP on a Sunday, you can then go and ride yourself. You can get your knee down on it, you can pose on it. It's the real deal. If you choose a bike like the Aprilia RS 125 as your introduction to motorcycling, it's going to spoil you something rotten. All your expectations are going to be based around that screamy little two-stroke engine, which is going to leave you at the end of every journey with a huge grin on your face, stinking a two-stroke. The RS 125 rocks. I love that bike. I would have one of those as a second bike. It's fantastic. Um, Learners, I mean, you don't know what, what you've got when you've got one of those. You've got one of the best bikes on the road, seriously. You have so much fun on the RS. It's fast, it makes just the right noises, the handling's great, the brakes are brilliant. Just get one. Now this is about as close as it gets to riding a 125 GP bike on the road. Don't be put off by that little 125 engine. Okay, I know these bikes aren't cheap to buy, but you're gonna have an absolute blast flying up and down that gearbox at the speed of light. And rewards are huge with great cornering. Oh, you'll get some fabulous lean angles. So our panel have placed the Aprilia RS125 in second place in our learner legal chart with a total score of 75%. But before we find out what the number one learner legal is, let's run down the top 10 chart so far from 10 to 2. In at 10, the very plain Kimco Pulsar Lux 125. At 9, the stylish Peugeot Jet Force. Slotting in at 8, we've the Sexy Sax XCC 125. And the Suzuki RV125 Van Van sits at 7. At number six, Yamaha's XVS125, while the Derby GPR50 is in at five. At four, the Retro Piaggio Vespa GT125. So, in the top three, and at three, Honda's NSR125. At number two, bags of Italian fun with the Aprilia RS125. Well, here we are at the number one spot, and it goes to a very close relative of the RS125, the Aprilia Tuono 125. Now, as you've probably guessed, the little Tuono has been inspired by its big brother, the 1000cc Tuono. Basically, it's an RS with the bodywork removed. The big advantage the Tuono 125 has over the RS is its riding position. It has all the performance of the RS, but much comfier. 
The high wide bars give you good control over this racy little beastie. The tail of the Tuono has a lockable storage area, dead handy for your lock and waterproofs. Another sensible feature is the 14 litre fuel tank which is shaped perfectly for you to wrap yourself around during one of those chin on the clock moments. They've even designed the swing arm so the exhaust can stay close to the bike to stop you grounding it out when cornering. This machine really stands out in the crowd just like the 1000cc Tuono does. It'll turn heads and I'm sure you'll fool some people into thinking that it is the bigger Tuono. This bike is as cool as a learner legal bike can be. It's Italian, it's slick and it's our number one. The Aprilia Tuono 125, uh, a street fighter version of the RS125, loads of attitude, loads of noise, perfect for a 17 year old. Ah, the Tuono 125, yeah, now if the RS 125 rocks, then the, the, the Tuono rocks. It's, a, it's an RS 125 and um, it's got high bars and no fairing and you just find it's completely brilliant around town. Fantastic bike, love it. Um, yeah, this is my favourite of the whole lot. So congratulations to Aprilia. I've personally yet to see this little marvel, but if it's anything like its bigger brother, it'll be hilarious. I would like to thank uh, Mene Motors for this award and for the continuous support to the motorcycle industries in this country. Thank you. So it's time to look at those combined scores for each of those categories of street cred. Build quality, performance, comfort and value. And they give the Aprilia Tuono 125 a total score of 82%. Well, that's it for this week and our chart of top 10 learner legals. All that's left to do is say a big thanks for watching and join me again next week for another chart of top 10 bikes. See you then.